What's going on guys? Welcome back to JR Aviation and welcome to part three of the $16,000 LSA rebuild. Now this will probably be the most exciting episode with this plane because today, Jay and I are flying it back to Scottsdale. We're finally taking it home and the rebuild is complete for now. Wait till we do some more mods. Who knows? Comment down below what you want to see next with this plane. But we're really looking forward to having it back with the other cars and planes and maybe getting some hours logged in it. So if you've been watching along, you would know that at the end of part two last video, we said how we were expecting to come down here for literally about like eight hours and then fly it home that day, not spend the night. Turns out we had to spend one night, day two, and then it turns out we had to spend another night. This is day three here in Yuma, and somehow we didn't see this coming, so we didn't pack extra clothes, we didn't pack toothbrushes, we didn't pack anything to spend the night. So day three now, we couldn't rock the same dirty, nasty clothes, so we all went to Goodwill last night, and we challenged each other to pick the coolest outfits in 15 minutes before they closed, and well, Vote down below who won. First up, we got Jay. All right, nice dress there, man. Yeah. Did you forget that you were a size medium and not a 4XL? Yeah, but hey, you can never go wrong with a Top Gun shirt. Look and at that. Nickelodeon shorts that <laughs> tie-dye looked like clouds. So I figured oh. it would be fitting for today's journey. This is actually so cool. The fact they found a Top Gun shirt, like what are the odds? Okay, yeah. nice. And then next up, we got Christian. There were a bunch of good shirts, but I figured we could use some luck. And I figured these shorts matched nicely with a little bit of green paint splatter mm, on them. Goodwill special. Kinda tied the whole outfit together. All right, we're gonna need a lot of luck today if we're gonna fly back with no issues, so we'll take it. Oh, and then my outfit. We thought it would be fitting to do the cacti shorts. Problem is, I'm a size 32 waist. I bought these just because they look sick. I didn't realize they were also 4XL and they're a size 50. <laughs> <laughs> we were thinking we need JR Aviation merch. And we're starting with pink cactus shorts. Not really, but some dope merch is definitely long overdue. Merch coming soon, and the top comment on this video will get a free piece of merch. So we're just happy to be in clean clothes. But anyway, we thought that was funny. Okay, here we go. Here's the LSA. Crazy. It's all back together. The interior's in. We need to clean it again because we have a lot of dirty butts in and out during all the testing and the aileron rigging. But time is a waste. It's getting hot here in the desert. We got to get out of here. It's going to get really hot and really bumpy later. So let's hit the skies. I can't believe it. I've never been in this. Oh my gosh. Look at this. His shirt is a flying hazard with all the extra material. So Brooklyn tying up here. Yeah, there we, go. there we go. That's a really nice outfit. The looks we got this morning at breakfast, they thought we were crazy. Awesome, awesome airplane. You um, flew it flew once it. now by yourself, so uh, yeah. my safety is in your hands. Yeah. I guess without further ado, here, you can taxi it over. I'll record it starting up, and uh, we gotta get like six gallons of fuel. Coming from the citation yesterday, it's so nice to say, six gallons of fuel. We need to fill it with gas. And the total bill is gonna be like $30. This is lovely. I'm loving LSA already. Forget citations when you can have $16,000 Zodiacs. This plane should fire right up, guys. This engine just pops to life. Clear. What I say, fires right up every time. It's the quickest fill up ever. Like 10 seconds worth of fuel. Seven gallons times a little over five bucks a gallon. 35 bucks worth of gas here. Boy, I like this a lot more than our other planes. And I just realized how bright it's gonna be. Not a cloud in the sky, high noon. And uh, this is me right now, but luckily I remember, Jay's like, where are you flying guys? I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I did bring them. They will help make us much safer pilots today so we can actually see what we're doing. Safer wait, wait, wait. and comfortable. They are an awesome, awesome company producing some of the best sunglasses in the aviation game. If you guys fly a lot, you're gonna know when you wear sunglasses, which a lot of us do in the cockpit, they begin to hurt your temples. They begin to hurt the side of your head. Or they break that seal and you can't hear as well through the headset because they don't flex at all. Whereas these, here, take them off, look at this. Their famous feature, look, look how flexible they are. That's what they're meant to do, and they're the comfiest things, so you don't break the seal because they just flex around your ear and around the headset. Christian, you can even get prescription ones. You got prescription? That's right, my prescription sunglasses are in the mail. Prescription glasses with sunglass clip-ons. Best of both worlds. And they have this cool gradient lens to where it's dark up top and light on the bottom, so you can see your instruments but also block out the sun. So if you wanna pick up a pair of flying eyes, be sure to hit that link down below. It'll save you some money, it'll help us, it'll help them. And we can't make these videos without our great sponsors, so thank you Flying Eyes for sponsoring this video. 
and uh, we'll see you guys up in the sky. Let's get to it. Here we go. The last time I sat in this plane was in California when we were ripping it apart. Look at that, six foot six, and I fit so easily. Oh, it's gonna be hot. <laughs> Whatever, it's only a two hour flight. We'll just brace for the heat, because this canopy, while it's lovely, you get the most insane views. I'll put the one that Jay got last night on his video, but on the flip side, you're fully exposed to the sun. So, is what it is. It'll be nice in the winter, but not nice right now. Fires right up. Leaving the canopy open because it's so hot with it closed. Within a minute, I was pouring sweat. So we're gonna defer this until we get to the end. full right rudder and full left rudder. This is going to be a normal takeoff on a 17 runway length is 2,000 feet. Uh, if we have any abnormalities prior to rotation with usable runway remaining, we're going to just secure the engine and stop on the runway. Uh, if we have an engine failure after rotation and we are below 1177, we're going to land within 30 degrees of runway heading. If we're above 1177, we're going to make a 180 and land on 35. Beautiful. Any questions? Good. No cool. questions. Okay. Summerton traffic. Zodiac 106 Whiskey Lima taking runway 17. Straight up departure to the south. Summerton. guys. All right, looking great over here, numbers-wise. Summerton traffic, Zodiac 106 Whiskey Lima, turning left crosswind from 17 Summerton. Okay, guys, everything's looking great. I'll let the GoPro cool off, and then we'll catch you when we're a little higher up. Albuquerque Center, good morning. Zodiac 106 Whiskey Lima, 7,500. Zodiac 106 Whiskey Lima, Albuquerque Center, pink belt, 290. Okay, guys, an update from 7,500 feet. The plane is flying great. The numbers look great. We're at uh, about 100 knots over the ground, which is probably about what we're truing out at. Just a hair over five gallons an hour. Jay, what do you think? Yeah, this thing is is awesome. I think it helps that I'm wearing the Top Gun shirt. <laughs> yeah, they gave me uh, extra five horsepower. Exactly. No, I, I was telling Jeffrey last night when I flew it, he was like, you know, ask me, describe how it flies, how does it feel. I've never flown anything this small. Um, I have a bunch of DA20 times. This to me is kind of like, I was telling Jeffrey, it's like almost like a go-kart. Really maneuverable. I mean, you can see how responsive it is, you know. Uh, I love the center stick. It's a really, really awesome awesome airplane. I mean, 25 points great visibility. We can see everything. I mean, this would be an awesome scenic flight, you know, whether we go to Grand Canyon or Sedona or five right, gallons per hour, turn on some of the ground. Love the guys. And we're loving our flying eyes. Shameless plug, but these are feeling great and oh my gosh, knocking down the brutal sun. It's the first time I put them to the test while flying and the gradient lenses are doing their job. Dark up top, light on the gauges. It does what they say. So be sure to check out their website down below. But anyway, look good. Gauges look good. We'll see uh, if we burn any oil when we get to Scottsdale. We'll check the level, but uh, the engine seems really, really healthy, but we'll look for leaks, look for oil burn. Everything is feeling great, so I don't think we'll run into any issues on the ground. So. All right, we'll catch you guys maybe in the descent. We're taking a long way around. Why not? We got time, so we'll we'll just put it through its paces, and we'll be on the ground in about an hour and a half. November one zero six Whiskey Lima contact approach one two zero point seven two zero point seven six Whiskey Lima. Wow, guys, we're just testing the steep turn abilities. Departure test of six three five Bravo Kilo. 
nearly 360 degree field of view. Crazy. F106 Whiskey Lima, South Delta, you're going to the right base for runway 21. Right base 21, 6 Whiskey Lima. Kodiak, 6 Whiskey Lima, runway 21, clear to land. Clear land, runway 21, 6 Whiskey Lima. All of our lights are on. Gas is set to the uh, fullest tank. Undercarriage gear is down. Make sure we're working in. Uh, prop is fixed. And uh, seatbelts are secured. Right base right now. And Flagship 554, Scott Cell Tower, give me your slow speed, extend down, we'll call your base. Scott Cell Tower, 713, Julia Bravo, uh, hold a short runway 21, IFR departure, ready to go. Departure, right turn northbound, please. North Texas, whiskey Lima, turn right on Alpha 11, or no delay to 10, contact ground. Right on Alpha 11, over to ground 106, whiskey Lima. Scott Cell Ground, good afternoon, Zodiac 106, whiskey Lima, uh, holding short Alpha to Alpha 11, taxiing to transient. 106 Whiskey Lima, Scottsdale Ground, turn left on Alpha, taxi to Transient via Alpha Alpha 7. Alpha Alpha 7 to Transient, 6 Whiskey Lima. Alrighty. Bam. Whew. All right, let me out of this greenhouse. Nice work. Another successful mission, huh? Yeah, we did it. All right. Well, let's get out and debrief. One hour later. All righty, round two, baby. Head off to Falcon Field over in Mesa because we have to go clean up the jet. We're taking that in a couple days, so we figured, perfect excuse. Why not take the Zodiac? The other way? Push down, push down while you do it. Well, never mind on the part two leg, the, uh, the canopy is completely shut and the door latch won't turn. So we can't get in it. We are locked out, not locked out, there literally is no lock. So we are stuck on the outside of our Zodiac. So now we're gonna have to drive. Great, we're one flight in, we can't even fly the plane anymore. Ah, this is so frustrating, it's so hot. We're trying to like shove the shirt into it to get a little more like leverage turning action. It's just completely stuck. Nothing. Well, after a ridiculous amount of good luck, we finally ran into our first problem with the Zodiac. A uh, big problem at that. The canopy being stuck and not being able to get in, uh, yeah, that's slightly problematic. So Jay and I probably fought that canopy for at least half an hour and we were about to give up. I'm like, Jay, come on, we'll just drive, it's okay. And he tried really, really hard to turn it and then boom, he got it to pop. So we're like, oh, heck yeah, all right, we can fly to Falcon Field now to go check up on the jet. This is great. So we hopped in and we proceeded to take off from Scottsdale and we got a pretty view down by Red Mountain, Mesa, and then we did a right base into Falcon Field Airport. So all is well, so far so good. Jay takes me over to the jet, drops me off. I get going on the work I have to do there while he and Brooklyn go take a nice little sunset flight to go get some gas over at Chandler where it's cheap. So we probably should have verified that the latch wasn't gonna be an issue moving forward. We thought just like, oh, it's just a little stuck and you just gotta turn it harder. But at least once you're on the inside, it's easier to get out because you have a better point of leverage. The handle's a little bigger to grab onto to uh, open up the canopy. So we're like, okay, no big deal. It's just the outside that's causing an issue. <laughs> no. So about 35 minutes later, I get a call from Jay and I'm like, hmm, okay, what's he calling about? Maybe there's a question about the refueling. Okay, hello? Uh, Jeffrey, we are stuck in the plane. The canopy will not open. And now, it's winter time now, so you might be thinking, oh, it's not a big deal. Not so fast. This video was filmed in the fall time and it can still easily get up to 105 degrees here in Arizona. It was quickly getting to be 120, 130, 140 degrees inside that greenhouse. And this issue was becoming seriously dangerous. They didn't have any water and they were just trapped in there baking in the sun. I felt so bad, but I was at the other airport. There was not much I could do except pop in the car and start to head their way. But I just said, you know, hey, like, I don't know, keep trying. If it doesn't work, like, We'll, we'll just break the canopy, I guess. No joke, that was the next step. Jay contacted Tower and said, hey, like, guys, we're stuck in this canopy. Do you know anyone around, maybe airport ops, that can come help us get this out? Jay would pull from the inside lever while they simultaneously pull from the outside lever and then maybe both of their forces combined would pop the canopy. So they sent over a couple guys from the flight school, a couple doors down, and they started 
pulling on this latch and guess what? They still couldn't get it to go. So after about 20 or 30 minutes of all these guys fighting to get this canopy open, it still would not budge. It was making a whole scene at the airport. It was quickly coming to the point of having to call the fire department to break the canopy. Because I'm telling you, that canopy, while it's amazing during the cool weather, it's a magnifying glass for this heat. I bet you it was like 140 degrees inside that thing, if not more, with no water. So I, I gave Jay the green light. I'm like, hey, if you have to call the fire department, you know, obviously your life is more important than a stupid canopy. Just like bust the locks, bust the canopy, break it open, I, I don't really care. So I left him with that and what do you know, he calls five minutes later saying, we're out. Oh, the sigh of relief. I'm like out via the fire department or out via opening it? And he goes, we, we got it to go. We got it to unlatch and we are free. And I'm like, oh man, what a sigh of relief. They're safe and the plane is safe, but obviously we had to do something about that. So uh, we ended up ordering a new latch mechanism and we ripped the old one out. Sure enough, it was in rough shape. All right, come on, always interrupting my videos. What do we got here, a Challenger? Looks like Challenger 350. So we got with the mechanic, ripped out the old latch, and sure enough, it was in rough shape, starting to, it was just deteriorating. It was super gummed up, it like would not move, so that makes sense why it would only open some of the time. So we replaced it with the new one, and now it's smooth as butter, and we have a new lock on there, so we can actually lock the canopy now, which is cool, so problem solved. But I wanna walk you over to the plane because I have a few questions that I need your guys' help on with the future of this plane and what mods and things we do next, one of them being paint. Let's check it out. And yes, I definitely have to sell some cars in the hangar to make room for a couple airplanes. Now that we have them back here at our garage, they need to get sleeping inside the hangar, not outside the hangar. Bam, and here are two of the planes from the collection. Oh boy, the Cirrus, the Cirrus, the Cirrus. Stay tuned for a video coming very soon with this one. I am so frustrated with the current situation on this plane. I'll explain in a full video where I lay it all out, but this plane has been grounded for almost 10 months. We can't fly it because of the parachute situation. I will just, once again, stay tuned for your future video. It's an absolute dumpster fire of a situation we're in with this plane, but on to happier things. Okay, the Zodiac here. So what do you guys think? The number one thing I need you to comment down below on is what we do with the paint. Obviously, it's back to being filthy again because it's been sitting out here for a few weeks in the dust, but I'm pretty sure with a really good detail cutting into the paint, since it's single stage paint, you can really polish it out and bring the life back into it. I'm pretty sure it would detail up really nicely. But if it doesn't, do we repaint this plane? What do you guys think? I'll put in some pictures. There's some really cool Zodiacs out there with some really cool paint schemes that I wouldn't mind having. Maybe a red or a blue or a gold, we can kind of mimic the black and gold but go with a paint job, or we just redo the vinyl graphics which are looking pretty horrendous after sitting outside for eight years. So we could just redo those and then polish up the paint the best we can and then just chalk it up to it being a $16,000 air pen. Like it's not gonna be perfect, it's not gonna be the prettiest thing or win show awards, but at least it flies well. At the end of the day, that's what counts. So let us know what you vote down below or, yeah, there's a few scuffs that'll have to polish out, but what do you guys think? There's just a little piece of the raw aluminum. Call me crazy, but what do you guys think about just stripping all the paint off and having a polished mirror-like aluminum finish? I'll put in a picture of one, the 650 that's at the Oshkosh shows all the time. That plane looks amazing. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of a fan of the polished aluminum look on these planes. I think it looks really cool. Comment down below the pros and cons of a straight aluminum plane. Wouldn't we save some weight and paint, right? If we strip all this off, how many pounds would we be saving? Every pound counts on this plane. So what do you guys think? So that's something I surely need some feedback on. Also, you guys commented in part two about the avionics. A lot of people said, oh, go full send, put in like a full avidine system and new dine on glass and yada, yada, yada. Okay, guys, like, Chill. This is a $16,000 airplane. I'm not gonna be too quick to throw in 50 grand worth of glass avionics, but I mean, we could do something, but at the end of the day, everything works really well as you saw in this video. I figured if something was maybe broken or not really acting quite right, okay, then we could upgrade it. But if everything's solid, there's no need to just throw a bunch of money at it. Like it's perfectly good how it is. And real quick guys, I can't forget to tell you about the last cool modification we did with this plane. Can you tell what it is? Let me get a little closer. Let me get even closer. Yep, that's right. We upgraded this plane with the Aero LED lights. These things are so, so strong. I'll put a clip here in just a second, but the, the original lights, oh man, 
not only do they take a bunch of power, they concentrate on just one point, and that one point at that isn't even that well lit, but these, oh my gosh, they shine so bright at whatever you're pointing at, but also like a 100 degree spread around that point. It just illuminates the whole area around you, which of course makes it safer to fly, it gives you better situational awareness when taxiing around or going in low light conditions, so, Really, really awesome upgrade. Not that much money. So check them out. I'll link their website down below, but really, really happy with this. Okay, and just for comparison's sake, Christian hooked up the old one. Got a battery here. Ready? Yep. Are you kidding me? The other one literally lights up the entire wall, the entire taxiway. Yeah, I think it's kind of like a flashlight. It's just very pinpointed, whereas the other one illuminates the entire area, which old school light versus new school LED, no question do it, get the upgrade. Now here's the advantage of the bubble canopy. Mm. Remember that greenhouse? Nice and toasty in here, even when it's only 40 degrees outside. Cold wave coming through Arizona. Thank you for all the support on these videos. Over 100,000 views of pop. These videos have been blowing up and the comments are sensational on all the videos. Two, three, four, 500 comments per video. A lot of Zenith and Zodiac owners in the comment section. So I really appreciate your information the most because you have real time experience with these planes and really, really informative comments. One guy says he can pull his power back and when he really wants the economy, he can get it down to three gallons per hour at about 80 miles per hour. So not bad, that's you know, coming up on 30 miles to the gallon, but that's going pretty slow. So I think the sweet spot is around that 100 knot cruise. I mean, that plane's cruising nearly double the fuel burn while only going about 30% quicker. So this plane is very fuel efficient as it should be. It weighs nothing. So can't wait to really stretch its legs. Maybe we'll take it up to the Grand Canyon or Sedona or Vegas. Definitely do some training in it, except I need to find a really lightweight CFI. You guys know Sean. Sean's great pilot, great CFI but uh, this is a one person airplane with Sean. I mean, that's just the reality of it. This is one of the times where I'm glad that I'm super skinny because it can be a two person airplane. Maybe take out a little bit of fuel or just have a lightweight passenger. So we'll see, but we'll definitely put this plane to some use, but comment down below, mod suggestions, what we should do next with it, what you wanna see next. Yes, a full cost breakdown will be coming next video. I'll gather all the receipts, I'll gather all the costs associated with getting this plane home after buying it in California, sign on scene, at the abandoned auction. Woo. Uh, this was definitely best case scenario pipe dream when I bought this thing at auction. I'm like, oh gosh, is this thing gonna be a parts plane or did I just strike gold? And uh, well, looks like I struck some Zodiac gold. Thank you guys for watching. Amen. Saying that it feels right.